The investigation into Michigan's former House Speaker is getting deeper, and now it could bring dark money political fundraising into the light. It is something Michigan is no stranger to. Former Detroit Mayor Kwame Kilpatrick established the Kilpatrick Civic Fund to take donations that were supposed to pay for community improvements. But the feds found money was also used for personal expenses, including luxury vacations. Former Governor Rick Snyder established the Nerd Fund and others to raise and spend money that did not require full disclosure. Both were scrutinized and criticized, but no state laws or legislative procedures were changed. 7 Action News reporter Jim Kirchner is going in-depth tonight to show you how an investigation into former House Speaker Lee Chatfield could change dark money fundraising. Michigan legislative leaders are watching all of the Chatfield allegations. What's the worst? <laughs> that, uh, it's difficult, I think, to uh, necessarily isolate what part of this sordid saga is the most troubling. That's because there's so much. It started with allegations from Rebecca Chatfield that she was sexually assaulted over a decade, starting when she was 15 or 16, and a student at the Northern Michigan Christian Academy, where former Speaker Lee Chatfield was a teacher, and his father is the pastor. Appalling, you know, on the, on the moral side of things and, and what it means the families. Rebecca married Lee's younger brother, Aaron. Lee Chatfield, through his attorney, acknowledged an affair with Rebecca, but said it was consensual and started when they were adults. Since that broke about a month ago, new evidence has surfaced that Lee Chatfield raised more than $5 million through political action committees, and $2.1 million of that was in his final year in office, 2020. Things seem not necessarily as heart-wrenching as the other ones do, but it, it's all bad and it's all shocking. The allegations include Chatfield putting members of his family on the payroll of the PACs. Staffers who worked for the Michigan House also double-dipped, ran their own political business. And the worst of the allegations from Aaron Chatfield, the younger brother, that he drove Lee Chatfield to Detroit to a strip club and to a hotel for hookups with women, including one staffer. Chatfield's attorney says Lee has not broken any laws. In Michigan, so-called dark money, who contributes and how it's spent, is not transparent. There's real room for reform here, and I've begun working on that with a few other legislators, and we, we can't avoid this issue. It's, we need to take it on head on. McBroom has been through legal and ethical issues in his years in Lansing. In 2015, he was chairman of a special committee, looked into House members Todd Corser and Cindy Gamrat, who had an affair and used their office resources for unofficial business. And last year, he chaired the Senate Oversight Committee, looking into allegations of fraud in the presidential election. As a Republican, he took heat. Former President Trump called him a rhino, a Republican in name only, when the committee found no widespread election fraud. McBroom says now the criminal investigation underway with Chatfield is better than what legislators can do themselves on the criminal side. In all of the eyes that are already on this from the, from the law enforcement side of things, it's been referred to the state police. They can refer things on to the attorney general, uh, to local prosecutors, to the FBI, uh, to the Department of Justice, uh, to the IRS, to the Michigan Treasury. Here in Detroit, we just watched as Andre Spivey resigned from the Detroit City Council and pleaded guilty to bribery. He took $35,000 cash from a towing contractor over five years. He was sentenced to 20 months in prison. Do you see the disparaging uh, differences there? Well, whatever, wherever the money gets placed, I mean, and city council members have campaign accounts too. It doesn't look like the former speaker is going to be getting away with anything either. The attorney for Rebecca Chatfield was set to do an interview for this report, but it was canceled at the last minute. We are told he is set to meet with criminal investigators this week. Jim Kurtzner, 7 Action News. Jim, thank you. 7 Action News did receive a statement from Chatfield's attorney. It reads in part, it's troubling that Senator McBroom does not care to follow constitutional principles such as the presumption of innocence. I encourage the senator to review the list of those falsely accused 
wrongly convicted and then exonerated on the National Registry of Exonerations website. You should also remember that the mere fact that a claim is made is evidence of absolutely nothing. You can read the full statement at WXYZ.com.